If you're seeing spots before your eyes, it's time for Aveeno Positively Radiant Face Moisturizer. Only Aveeno has an Active Naturals Total Soy Formula that instantly brightens skin and helps reduce the look of brown spots in just four weeks for healthy, radiant skin. Try it for a month, then go ahead and try to spot a spot. Aveeno Positively Radiant, naturally beautiful results. From our earliest days, we appreciate beauty. Research has shown babies spend longer looking at adults with smooth skin, big eyes, and full lips. And they don't like uglies. The fact that the tiniest babies are drawn to beautiful faces shows how much beauty matters to us human beings. You know, professionally and personally, it gets you in almost every door. If they think you're the most stylish man or the most handsome man, then related to work, then wonderful. It is a true fact of our society that looks are important. And anyone that doesn't believe it, no, these women that say, uh, I, I keep a clean house, he loves me. No woman's husband ever came home and said, oh, the floor's immaculate, lie down, you hot slut. Never happens. All the studies show that beautiful people get better jobs and earn more money. Let's start by seeing what most people think. Somebody like Kate's face is incredible because her bone structure just, you know, bowls you over. She has got such fabulous bone structure. So as far as a canvas for, for a makeup artist to make her up, and you know, um, she's just so desperately photogenic as well. Sarah Dukas is head of the Storm Model Agency. She discovered Kate Moss, and she's acknowledged as an expert at spotting the next fashionable face. She believes that ideas of beauty change all the time. It's very fast flowing. I mean, we find a lot of faces, and they are fashionable for a moment. Oh, wow. We're constantly looking for new faces. But it's become voracious. It doesn't get more voracious than this. 700 entries in a competition to find a new face for the agency. When it all started 10, 15 years ago, that faces started to look very unconventional. Um, you know, used to hear people say, she's hideous, or, you know, I mean, I think that girl is really quite ugly. I mean, I think, you know, the general public were probably quite aghast at some of the strange faces in magazines like The Face, for example. But I think gradually, obviously, it gets inside one, and it's what we consider is beautiful. Mm. Today, Sarah is face to face with the 10 finalists she's selected. She's looking for the next beautiful face that will work for the fashion industry. Not too nervous, I hope. This is Zara, aged 17. This is Samantha, age 16. Laura, age 18. Rachel, aged 18. So who will they go for and why? Eyes should be wide space. You can't have a weak jaw. Okay. <laughs> you can't have a sort of flat nose because the light hits it and you end up sort of with a, you know, a banana. I love the nose and the mouth. It's slightly imbalanced. It's that slight... Do you know what I mean? The eyes are slightly smaller, but she's just got such an interesting... It's very nice. Do you think she's a possible? I'm still... You're, course, you I'm still your... thinking back to Rachel. I don't know, it's just something about her. I know, she's serene and beautiful. Although she's terribly pretty and she's beautiful, she's got a very sort of... There's some disagreement about who is more beautiful, Rachel or Zara. Yeah, it's not as, as interesting, I would say. Yeah, it hasn't just got much as much sort of depth, whereas somebody like um, Zara, that's got such a good structure in place, the camera just loves her face. They've chosen Zara. Would you have? Apart from a big hooter, cross eyes or missing teeth, the widely held view in the fashion industry seems to be that beauty is what the fashion industry says it is. But I suspect there's more to beauty than that. CoverGirl introduces the next generation of beautiful. What's next? You. And makeup that won't weigh you down. New Nature Luxe ups your beautiful with a light as air feel. 
and new lip perfection makes your lips more beautiful in seven days. Join the beauty movement to help all of us rock the cover girls we are. Get samples, rewards, get involved at Facebook.com. The next generation of Easy Breezy Beautiful is you. Cover Girl, rocking it for 50 years. If we're talking about female beauty and standards of female attractiveness, the two largest predictors are youth and health. Dr. David Buss studies human mating behavior. Things like clear skin, smooth skin, uh, full lips, because uh, lips, uh, most people don't know this, lips get thinner as you, as you age, and so full lips is a sign of youth, also, also a sign of health. Remember Pythagoras? The square of the hypotenuse of a right-angled triangle is equal to the sum of the squares of the other two sides. Thank you, Elizabeth. Yes, him. He claimed not only to quantify or to understand the secret or the code of beauty, he claimed to see it beauty in the universe. That's a pretty big statement. I'm looking for beauty in the face. He says he found it for the, for the universe. That's pretty amazing. What Pythagoras realized is that plants and animals grow according to fairly precise mathematical laws. It's not just chance that flowers unfold in beautiful patterns. And the Greeks found the patterns were based on a particular geometrical ratio. But it wasn't until the Renaissance that an Italian did the maths. He figured out that the key to beauty was the ratio of 1 to 1.618. And yet, and you're not going to believe this, 1.618 actually works. Do something like measure the distance from the floor to your navel, and then from your navel to your head. If you're well proportioned, the ratio should be 1 to 1.618, and that ratio is seen all over the beautiful body. Gucci Premier, the new essence for women. Now remember Zara? Will all this theory work on a real person like her? This is uh, what's called a golden divider. It divides uh, different line areas or distances from uh, into 1 and 1.618, which is the golden ratio. And in a beautiful face, we'll see that ordinarily the width of the mouth is 1.618 times the width of the nose. And it does in Zara, exactly. Right. If we look at the teeth, we can see that ordinarily, show me your teeth and smile a little bit. The width of the upper front tooth is 1.618 times the width of the tooth right next to it. And the same on the other side. The width of the upper front tooth is 1.618 times the tooth next to it. It's amazing how this proportion uh, is repeated over and over again in a beautiful face. And the same thing with Zara. If I, if I uh, do the width of her mouth, I'm sorry, I'll do it again. <laughs> I'm a surgeon. Scary. I'm used to sharp things. <laughs> I hardly ever cut myself. Okay, so. so if I do the width of her mouth to the width of her face, the camera should be able to see that this, uh, the width of the mouth is 1.618 times the distance from the, the mouth to the corner of the cheek. And it is. Anyway, this, this relationship holds up over and over again in the face. Mm -hmm. And Zara's a great example. That's why she's so pretty. So Zara's face fits the golden ratio. It's not bad, is it? Mm -hmm. <laughs>
Now, this idea that maths can explain a beautiful face, any beautiful face, has been taken even further by Stephen Marquardt. So if I look at the nose, the nose is a triangle. Mm. On the front view, on the side view, the nose is a triangle again. Mm. And in a beautiful face, the sides of the triangle are 1.618 times greater than the base. And from a triangle, you can build a pentagon. What's the most attractive configuration of the face, the most attractive expression? Smile. Smiling. Yeah. When I smile, oh, you start to what? see the pentagons here. Yes, I here. do. There. Okay. It's the there, there, there. Right, exactly. Stephen Marquardt combined pentagons and triangles all with the 1.618 ratio and built a mask. He claims that the closer a face conforms to his mask, the more beautiful it is. Let's start with, say, Kate Moss. All right. You know, Kate looks totally different than the others, All right. but if I put the mask on her, you can see that it fits very closely. The interesting thing about Kate is that her eyes are uh, preternaturally wide or unusually wide. Her eyebrows fit beautifully, her lips, her nose, her jawline is very, very nice, even if the hairline is exactly what it should be. And it's not just women. The same mask can be put on men. And Tom Cruise fits it perfectly. In fact, Stephen claims it fits any human face so long as it's beautiful. by Katy Perry. Here's one of my favorite actors, star of stage, screen, and television. And let me just see how he fits. Oh, what a handsome guy. Oh, it's Paul Newman. It is Paul Newman. Wait a no, minute. No, wait a moment. It's better than Paul Newman. It's <laughs> John Cleese. Don't tell me that. My please. gosh. <laughs> you got a mustache grid? To my surprise, it didn't fit my face at all, though Stephen had a good excuse for me. Quite frankly, it's very masculine. You'll see the in a man, this the is eyes very are kind narrower. Way of putting it. Well, Go on. Not, the no. eyes are what? The eyes are always narrower in a man, and your eyes are narrower than the grid. The lips are thinner, and you can see your lips are thinner here, and your nose is, is narrow just like the grid. And actually, your nose is a little shorter. Um, oh, I should get longer nose. Which is good, actually. Fine. Having discovered the mask, Dr. Marquardt was able to successfully use it as a template when reconstructing patients' facial deformities. Okay, now Elizabeth Hurley, she's almost as good-looking as you, but... <laughs> Let's see, I think... Oh my gosh. Pretty darn close. The eyebrows are just on the upper edge of the mask, giving this nice arch. It looks beautiful. Oh, don't tell us. So, yeah, it'll, terrible. it'll be our secret. The cheeks are perfect. The nose fits beautifully in there. The lips, the width of the lips is great. The lower lip has a beautiful curvature. The, the chin and jawline is great. It's just remarkable how it fits.